scripture gives support to all of our confidence that the love of God is abiding and always will be. For instance, in the Old Testament, Psalm 121 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hill. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going now and forevermore. We find this affirmation of God's love so beautifully expressed in a psalm that we all know by heart. Say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water, he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, even in this moment of grief, we find God speaking to us through these scriptures. Death does not have the last word. When we turn to the New Testament, that assurance of God's love continues. In Romans 14, it says, none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. Living or dying, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. What a marvelous gift of love God has given us. The passage in the Gospel of John 14 begins and brings good news to all who are facing death and to all those who mourn. In this passage, Jesus is speaking to his followers who feel uncertain about their future. And he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, Jesus says. For in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that where I am, you may also be. And so today, even as we mourn the death of our dear friend and loved one, we find a sense of joy that Bill Trusting Christ has found his place and now abides in God's eternal love. 
Thanks be to God. You know, when I, when I look out on the congregation this afternoon, I remember that Bill found a place right back there about four or five pews down. And every Sunday morning, even though he had a hard time sometimes breathing most of the time, I think, he was in that place. And friends, I must tell you, Bill was an inspiration to me as I saw his faithfulness. And I remember that Bill found his place with Jesus who has prepared a very special place for him and rejoice that he is in that place with the Father, Heavenly Father, whom he loved and served. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we continue even in this day that does have grief, we also celebrate the joy that we have in trusting in the Lord and that he is truly providing for us in all ways. Uh, there should be a hymnal in front of you, so we will uh, sing together. Uh, and as you are able, I would encourage you to stand. We're going to sing hymn number 139, which is Praise to the Lord the Almighty. We will sing verses 1, 4, and five. As you are able, let us stand in worship this day. may be seated. We come to a time now in our service 
where we reflect on Bill's life and what he meant to us. In a moment, we'll hear from some of his family, but first I want to share with you some of what Bill meant to me as a friend, what he meant to this church, and of course what he meant to Sue and Adina. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at a picture of him on the on the little thing, but you know, as soon as Bill opened that mustachioed mouth of his, you you knew he wasn't from around here, right? Um, Bill, Bill, I uh, was born in Buffalo, New York. Uh, that is many, many over yonders away. Um, we. We were blessed, though, to have uh, Bill and Sue uh, uh, and, and Adina here in Thomasville, though. Uh, but in visiting with uh, Sue and Adina this week and hearing more about uh, Bill and Sue's uh, pre-Adina uh, life, uh, 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 they, were, uh, they were world travelers. I was kind of shocked that they found home here in Thomasville. Uh, did you know that, that Bill and Sue they lived in Australia for four years in their young life. Did you know that? I didn't know that. And, and, and it sounds like it went like this. Bill said, Sue, I think we should move to Australia. And Sue said, okay. And they just went. They, they moved to Australia uh, and lived there for four years. Um, and I also thought it was kind of funny what, what brought them back uh, to the States. Uh, Bill said to Sue, you know, uh, 1976, that's the bicentennial year. I think it'd be cool to be back in the States for that. And Sue said, okay, <laughs> let's, let's do that. And so, uh, and so they, they took six months, I understand, to travel uh, from uh, Australia back uh, to the U.S., and, and then I, I think it was off to, to Tucson, Arizona, by way of Canada, uh, is my understanding, but they were quite the travelers. Uh, we were lucky to have them here. Then once they were back in the U.S., they had this pop-up camper, uh, and uh, they shared lots of other adventures together, including uh, causing, Bill caused, uh, with his camera, caused uh, the great uh, buffalo stampede of Yellowstone. Uh, you may not have heard of that. It's the, it's the thing you'll have to ask uh, Sue about that. But they had a lot of adventures uh, and an exciting life. And I'm glad that they settled here in Thomasville, though. I think it was, I think it was easy for Bill to, uh, to grow wherever he was planted. Uh, because Bill, uh, he kind of effortlessly used humor uh, uh, when dealing with others. And I find that laughter uh, bridges so many cultural differences. Of, of course, Bill's particular brand of humor uh, wasn't quite for everyone here in, in the Deep South. Uh, perhaps the stuffiest of folks among us uh, struggled with how to take Bill. Uh, but personally, I thought uh, he, was, he was hilarious. Uh, his, his humor was kind of uh, I called it like shock and awe, you know, like uh, often Bill's humor left your mouth kind of going, oh, I can't believe he just said that, you know. Um, uh, but uh, Bill was a, a fun guy, uh, and uh, he was born on Halloween. I have a daughter who was born on Halloween, but Bill was a, a, a Halloween baby. Uh, and as such, Bill, even into adulthood, loved to dress up on his birthday and go places, and including one year, uh, Bill decided that he wanted to dress up as a woman. And see, now, Bill was a trendsetter. Bill dressed up as a woman before men dressing up as women became cool. Um, but he shaved off his mustache, he went to the Goodwill, picked out a lovely dress, uh, and he and Sue went to the plaza to hang out. I mean, I cannot, I cannot imagine doing this. I might be turning red, actually, thinking about it. But Bill did that, and, and, and he even walked up to some random guy at the bar and asked him if he wanted to dance. Uh, and, and then he accepted the rejection gracefully. Uh, there's a picture of this. 
And I think it's going to be there uh, in the fellowship building in a, a, in a reception following the service. I encourage you to, to come and, and share your condolences with the family, but also to take a look at this picture. It was great. Uh, Bill isn't the only funny person in the family, though. I asked, I asked Sue what Bill was like as a husband, and she quit. Bill was a good husband when he wasn't golfing. Bill was bold, blunt, and direct. Uh, there was no break-in period with Bill. Adina said, to talk to my dad was to know him. Bill was quick to build relationships. Never was this more evident than when Bill gained three new siblings while he was a freshman in college at Fredonia. Bill's mother remarried to a man with three kids, so Bob, Marilyn, Ken, and Bill gained Linda, Tom, and Betty as siblings. Betty, who now lives in Oclockney, was seven when the two families joined. I asked Betty what that was like, and Betty said, Bill treated me like any other big brother. He teased me. I think it's terrific that this family has stayed close and connected over the years. Bill was also a hard worker uh, and a compassionate advocate for those in need. His primary career was in vocational rehabilitation. So, so Bill helped people who had been injured on the job, like people uh, who were receiving workers' comp, uh, but he helped them receive care and be restored back into the workforce. He helped them heal and then become productive members of society and providers for their families. He had endless patience and concern for his clients who were honest. Apparently he had a little less patience for those looking to milk the system. Bill was also active in serving here at Thomasville First United Methodist Church. Bill wasn't just a regular worship attender. He was plugged in. I'll always remember him uh, playing handbells. Uh, he played in a, a men's court, handbell quartet one time uh, or several times with Raymond Waits, David Bedell, and Paul Yord. And, and uh, Paul, uh, uh, Bill played the the big bells, the big ones at the end, you know, and, uh, and then uh, at some point in time his health, they would even kind of mounted the bells in the table and he would still play them that way. But, um, but when I was in serving in student ministry Hill, here, Bill stepped up and was instrumental in starting a golf tournament to benefit our youth group and help send students on mission trips. Uh, he did the same thing for the band program at Central where Adina was a student and played. Um, but of course, Bill was a man of faith, and I'm sad that he won't be sitting in that pew uh, every Sunday. I rejoice, though, that Bill is in heaven. He's finally free from that oxygen machine. If our senior pastor, Carrie, was able to be here today, she would have, have given a very hearty hallelujah at that point in time. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that Bill Bowen was ready to meet his maker when he asked me to speak at his funeral over a year ago. I knew Bill wasn't afraid to go to his eternal resting place when he and Sue showed up at church in the midst of this pandemic when we resumed having in-person services. After the service out front, I asked him, Bill, are you sure coming here was the best decision considering this virus attacks people's lungs? And he looked at me like that was the stupidest question he'd ever heard. Like, where else would I be? And I'm not saying that decision somehow made him more courageous or more faithful than those who chose to be more cautious, I'm only saying that Bill had come to terms with his earthly death and was assured of his eternity. Bill went into this final surgery in hopes of being liberated from that machine and with dreams of once again playing golf, but he did so knowing that he might not survive. I hope that I can face death with the same faith that Bill had. 
I hope that you too have put your faith in Jesus Christ. I don't want to take up more than my fair share of time, but I, I want to take this final moment to remind all of you, Bill's family and friends, that Bill loved you all so much. Adina, you are the joy of your dad's life. He couldn't be more proud of who you are. And Sue, from the moment you stole his Yankee heart at that wine and cheese party in New York, you have been his constant partner. And he loves you so much. He's so grateful for you. Hope you all know that that we're here for you as you adjust to life without Bill. A few members would like, uh, of this family would like to take some time to share with you as well. I, I invite uh, Bill's niece, Ruth, to come and, and share. stairs. Unfortunately, I couldn't print this out, so it's going to be on my phone, so it's going to look a little weird. So um, I wrote it down so I would be fast. <laughs> so um, Uncle Bill loved Aunt Sue 49 years, right? Yeah. And he adored you, Adina. And he's so proud of you and all that you accomplished in your life. He always was a big family man, loves all his family, especially his six siblings. And he was the best uncle to me, with wise words and wise cracks that made me laugh. He was always in pain in his life from his scoliosis. It was so bad that at 16 years old, he had one of the first back surgeries in the United States with a bar on his back which paved the way for all the present neuro back surgeries that you now know. He was very smart, one of the first in the family to get a degree as they came from a very poor family. My father, his oldest brother, Bob, was always very proud of him and talked about him getting that degree. He was close to friends and family and called them often if he couldn't see them. He just two weeks ago called mom, Joy. Just a couple weeks ago, he was uh, after his surgery, and he's told her that on the answering machine, this is your favorite brother-in-law calling from heaven. <laughs> that was his humor. <laughs> so he was an adventurer, a risk taker, having many surgeries in his life and marrying Aunt Sue and traveling the world. But we all know it was Aunt Sue was the biggest um, risk taker, marrying Uncle Bill. <laughs> so. Uncle Bill had the talent that he could walk into any place and make a million friends. Mom would always say that about him everywhere he went. And it, it was true. Um, Uncle Bill would always be available to talk to me and give me advice whether I wanted it or not. And I will miss his jokes, his laughs, and his mannerisms. Filling in for my dad when he died, even to dancing not with me, but my husband, Mike, at my wedding. I'm sure I know up in heaven, all the brothers are scheming up some good tricks to play on all of us as my dad, as the architect, Uncle Ken, the one with the know-how to get things done, and Uncle Bill with the devious ideas. While playing a game of cards with Grandma and Grandpa, Uncle John, Jeff, Brian, and Faith, laughing, cheating, and having fun, I wish I could have played one more game of cards with you, Uncle Bill. Just one more game. 
Isn't that what we always wish for? One more chance to be with them? And now Bill's brother, Tom. Hello. Uh, um, this isn't one of my more favorite things to do, to speak in front of people. Uh, but I was thinking about it a lot today, and when I was asked if I would do it at first, I, I said no, but, and decided it would be good to. Uh, I like the idea that we're here to celebrate his life. It was, I think, definitely a celebration to all of us. Uh, we got some notes. I know one of the big impacts that I got to experience because of him was I went to New York City. I was eight years old, and that was to go to his wedding with Sue. And it was very neat. He worked at the United Nations, and the wedding was at the UN Chapel. And that's not something a lot of eight-year-olds can say they got to do. Um, and the rest of the trip, I understand there's a lot more adventure going on than an eight-year-old understood. I think we got locked in a taxi cab and a few other things that I didn't know what was going on at. I got to share something with Bill that I found out was a big influence, not influence, but remembrance in his life when I was in Boy Scouts. And Sue's already smiling. Um, he went with us on a canoe trip. And I didn't, to me, as a kid, it, I saw it differently than he did. So it was fun listening a while back at his side of it. And um, we were in, we started off basically in brackish water, and our destination was, I believe it was Flamingo, and this is in Miami. And when, on our way there, it was low tide, and I guess none of us had any idea what we were doing as far as leadership and all that, as far as planning what time to go. So a bunch of us had to drag canoes through waist high mud to get to the other side through this brackish water and all. Well, when we finally got to where we were going, that's when Bill found out we didn't have tents. We were just in sleeping bags. And it was, um, for Miami, it was unusually cold that, that weekend. So he got quite an experience in that. And then the way back, we decided not to go back through the mud just in case it was low tide again. So he got to be in a canoe in the Atlantic Ocean <laughs> as we came cut back across. So that was, I guess, something I got to add to his life as, as he added New York City to mine. And then briefly they lived in Miami or it might have been several years, I forget. And I know that um, Bill, we always got along great. And then um, we moved here, or they moved here and I followed uh, about a year or two later. And that's been 34 years now. And we were 10 minutes apart. I'm gonna miss being 10 minutes away from Bill. Linda. Those of you that have known Bill here in Thomasville have 
one picture in their mind of him. And that's good. Um, the memory that I have is from a very different time. Um, he was, Bill was living with, with Bob and Joy in Miami and our family had gone down to visit. And one day we went to the beach and Bill went along, but he had broken his toe. I don't really know all of the details of it, but I believe a bowling ball was involved. So, you know, he, he's hobbling around with his broken toe. And, and I could swim, but it was the ocean, and I wasn't really understanding about rip currents. And I stepped a little too far, and all of a sudden found that I wasn't able to swim fast enough to not be pulled away from the shore. And I wasn't like actively drowning, but I was getting scared because I thought, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. And Bill had been watching and he turned to the lifeguard and he said, um, are you gonna help her? And the lifeguard's like, oh, um, I've been watching her. I, I'm gonna teach her a lesson. And Bill just kind of took off, broken toe and all into the water after me. Well, of course, as soon as he went into the water, the lifeguard like did his job and came out and, and got me. And, and I remember being kind of irked with the lifeguard thinking, what are you doing? Bill was already coming for me. And this was a couple of years after my dad had married um, mom. And when families blend, it's, it's an interesting thing because you don't know right away how things are gonna be. Bill went from being the baby of the family to the middle. I went from being the oldest of the family to the middle. The middle's a very different place than the youngest or the oldest. And there, there is kind of a gap. I mean, there's nine years between Bill and me. And you know, you kind of work your way around things and, and you wonder, well, how, how is this gonna work? Or, you know, what, what kind of a family are we? And in that moment of Bill with his broken toe coming into the water after me, what I knew was when I was in trouble, my big brother would come for me. soul 
It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight the cloud be rolled back as a scroll the trump shall resound and the lord shall descend even so faith has been made sight even as we grieve here today it is well with Bill let us pray into your hands O merciful Savior we commend your servant Bill Bowen acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold a lamb of your own flock a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive Bill into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of light. Amen. May we turn our hope in eternal salvation into worship and praise. We sing hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance. As you're able, let us stand and proclaim. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a voice. Of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of the Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. of rapture now boast on my sight angels descending ring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. 
This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Please remain standing for our benediction. Before we have that, though, I would remind you once again that the family will be uh, departing here and moving over to the fellowship building right here behind the sanctuary uh, to receive you. If you would like uh, to, to come in there, there will be some refreshments. Receive now this benediction. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.